Welcome to Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. Now let's join Pastor Cowan and the congregation of Faith is the Victory Church. This is Victorious Living. Let's go to Matthew's Gospel, the 19th chapter, and I'm going to read the 16th through the 23rd verse, beginning in verse 16, talking about who or what is your God. All righty. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good Master, what, uh, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why do you call me good? There's none good but one, and that is God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, which Jesus said, I've got that mixed up. Thou shalt do no murder. He asked, he asked the Lord, what shall, the, the rich young ruler we call it. He asked the Lord what he should do in order to enter into life. Verse 18. He said unto him, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, uh, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What do I lack? And Jesus said unto him, If you will be perfect, which is the word for complete, if you will be complete, go and sell that which you have and give to the poor and you shall have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, this, is, this was a young man that, uh, that bragged to Jesus what he had done, but he admitted in telling Jesus what he hadn't done. So sometimes we can uh, think we're doing well and doing some things that Jesus tells us or the scripture tells us to do, so maybe we remind the Lord of what we have done, but sometimes people don't remind him of what they have not done. That's the case with this young man here. And of course, we went through those scriptures. And he said, I've been doing it since I was a young, young man. So Jesus, uh, Jesus made a statement in uh, Matthew's gospel, uh, the 15th chapter, and the 8th verse. And this, this is what he said. He said, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Now this young man was doing a lot of things here, but Jesus said to him, said, now there's, there's, there's one thing you, you lack, or there's one thing before you'll be complete. And he, tell, he said, uh, he told him what it was. He said, now, the, the young man had a great possession. He could go sell what you have. And did it, what did he say? And give to the, um, and give to the poor. Now what a lot of times people take that, I've heard, I've, I've heard, preachers preach on that, that, that Jesus is telling him to get rid of everything he's got. Sell it or give it away. Give away everything you've got. That's not, that's not what Jesus was doing. Now it sounds very much, you can sound very much like that. Go sell what you got, give it to the poor. It sounds like, you know, Jesus is saying to get rid of everything you got, give it to the poor. Now he is stated there but you got to understand what Jesus' motive in saying that to the young man. He was, he was endeavoring to find out if he indeed was the, was the young, young man's Lord. And so he rehearsed to him uh, what he had been doing. But when it come to his possessions, Jesus was not in the picture because that he was holding on to his possessions. So Jesus was challenging his heart. He was looking inside to the, man, to the young man's motives and why he had not done 
or why he was not complete or why he was not doing all that he should be doing. And so Jesus is challenging his heart. And so then uh, I, I read the scripture to, to you that, that Jesus said, uh, this people honor me with their lips. This people draws uh, nigh unto me with their mouth. Confession, his mouth, his words, draws nigh to me with their mouth. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is not with me. Their heart is far from me. This young man, you know, all of us have a, we have a secret place within us. We have a hidden place within us. And so we don't always, we don't always express our motives or our reasons uh, for whatever. We conceal that on the inside. This young man had his possessions concealed on the inside. That was a part he didn't want Jesus to touch. That was a part of his life that he did not want Jesus to touch. And it's like he's uh, bargaining with the Lord. Now, look, I've done this, 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 this. I've done this ever since I've been young, you know, and so forth. But Jesus was looking in that hidden secret place of his heart. And uh, so when he challenged him with the word, go sell what you have and give to the poor. Jesus was not telling him that, but he was challenging what the young man harbored in his heart. What, who is his God or what was his God? So apparently he had, uh, he had, he had his possessions in the wrong perspective. He had his possessions in the wrong place. And so Jesus challenged him. He, he, he was, uh, this is a statement uh, here that Jesus made. You draw nigh to me with your mouth. You honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. This is a statement that really goes to the core of one's being, their core being, their life. Uh, all of that's within the core, the core being of, of their, uh, uh, or the core of their being. The core of a person is, the, is their innermost being. It's what we call their heart. It is the secret place of one's beliefs and thoughts. It's all concealed on the inside of us. And uh, perhaps uh, uh, he was speaking in reference to the life that his possessions provided. Or perhaps the young man was talking about the endlessness of his possessions. And Jesus gave him a simple answer. Keep the commandments. Keep, just keep the commandments. You want to know how to enter into life? Keep the commandments. And there's where he started to brag. I've done this, 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 and this. But there was a part of him that he did not want Jesus to touch. And so uh, Jesus gave him the simple answer, keep the commandments. And at this point, Jesus expounds upon the meaning of the commandments. It was here that the young man exposed the thoughts and beliefs of his innermost being. He, he, was, he was happy one second or minute, and the next minute he was sad because Jesus looked on the inside of him. How, you, how many of us, we realize that, I'm sure we all do, but Jesus sees the innermost thoughts. He sees our innermost being. Uh, he sees our motives. He sees our reasons. Jesus, he sees it all. And we can't hide it from him but we can hide it from you. You can hide it from me, but you can't hide it. Your innermost beings, your innermost thoughts, your, your motives, your inward motives, you can hide it from me, but you can't hide it from him. And so there's the situation that this young man's in. He was, he was more attached to what he possessed than he was to what he had been doing. And so when Jesus told him to go sell, says the young man went away sorrowful 
because Jesus went on the inside of him, touched his heart, touched where his, uh, his heart was, what his heart was in. And as the story unfolds, we see then that his possessions had become his God. And so there, therein goes my title, what or who, who or what is your, your God? So Jesus challenged this young man's core beliefs. He challenged this young man's willingness. His core beliefs was challenged. His willingness was challenged. And his love for and what and whom. He, all of that was exposed when Jesus looked on the inside of this, this young man. But you know, he had the thought, I'm sure the young man had the thought, I'm really going to impress the Lord here. He's going to be so proud of me. And he's going to be impressed and he's going to go back and he is, uh, he's going to just tell the synagogue. You know, he was a helper. He was a ruler, uh, one of the rulers. He wasn't on the Sanhedrin, but he was one of the uh, rulers that was training in the synagogue. So he's going to go back to the synagogue and tell them, I really impressed Jesus today. Oh, he was so impressed. <laughs> you know, it's hard to impress somebody that created the world. Isn't that right? It's hard to impress somebody that's raised the dead. It's hard to impress somebody that's healed the sick. It's hard to impress, you know, somebody said, go fishing and find gold in the fishing. It's hard to impress him. But this young man really thought he was impressing the Lord. I know that none of us have ever been along that line and thought that way, that we are impressing him. <laughs> okay, so he answered, uh, Jesus challenged this young man's core beliefs, his willingness, he ch challenged his love for, for him or for God, and, uh, found, and Jesus found out just where his love was at, who it was in or what it was in, he found that out. So he answered with his words, uh, what he had done, the young man, but his heart, his core, his hidden secret place, he revealed uh, uh, what he had not done. He had not been, he had not been generous. He did not have the poor in his heart. Uh, though he had many possessions, a lot of possessions, his heart was not to give it any of it to the poor. Where all the while the scripture says, he that hath pity on the poor lendeth to the Lord. Notice it says, he lends to the Lord and the Lord will repay him. When you take the, some of the substance that God has blessed us with and we have pity on the poor or we help the poor, we are lending to the Lord. And, and, and here's, the, here's the tag. Here's the promise, the tag. What, what does the word say? The Lord will repay. And he don't give, he don't give, he don't repay in the same measure or amount that you give. He always goes beyond. He always goes beyond. When he gives, when he pays you back, he always pays you more than what you gave to the poor. So this was a very self-righteous young man. None of us in here have ever been self-righteous. Lord have mercy. I grew up in a self-righteous. <laughs> you know, what, what, what I'm saying is it wasn't like we, we went around bragging about our rights, but it was simply thinking we have to work. We have to make ourselves, you know, uh, acceptable to God. And we, you know, when that's not true, God accepts you like you are. But the good thing about that is as when he accepts you and we follow him, he does not leave us like we were. And so Jesus has really spoiled this young man's day. He went away very sorrowful. He, uh, I'm sure he went away and said, boy, I wish I hadn't asked him that question. Because <laughs> I wouldn't like that answer. I just didn't like that answer, you know. But in, in, anyway, Jesus went to the core of his being. All of us sitting here tonight, there is a core, there is a core within our being. 
It houses how we think, what we think, what we think about, whatever, all of that, you know. Uh, there, there, it's a, something on the inside of us. I call it the core, core being of what's going on in there that we will expose to some degree with you, but we will not expose it to everybody. We'll expose it, we think, to some degree with the Lord, but not everything. We don't want the Lord to know everything. We want him to know a few things, but we don't want to, him to know everything. We want him to know that I get up at five o'clock every morning and I read my Bible. I want him to know that I am in prayer and in my daily devotion from five to six o'clock in the morning, we're impressing God. And so there are certain things that we want God to know about us, but there are certain things within us that we do not want God to touch. Who or what is our God? And so, you know, uh, if people are not, you know, watchful or if they haven't been taught or whatever, money, possessions becomes a part of their life that they, they, they inside, you know, they, uh, they protect it. Uh, they protect it by how? By not doing with it what the scripture teaches them. And of course, we, we're not talking about money tonight, just a little bit, but we're not, that's not really what I want to talk about. So all was well with this young man. He's, he's young. He is, uh, he's one of the, I call him one of the junior rulers in the synagogue. He's being trained and he no doubt has a vision of sitting on the Sanhedrin court. Got, a, got big dreams, but he don't want anything that he's harboring on the inside to be taken. So all was well until Jesus touched the core of his being. Boy, I tell you, have you ever had Jesus that touched the core of your being? I'm not talking about money and necessarily possessions at all. That's part of it. But the core of your being, you ever had him to touch that? When you harbor, when you are people, I, you understand when I say when you, okay. When we harbor unforgiveness, when we don't like somebody. Uh, we don't want you to know that. So we keep it hidden. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't think we go to the extent that, you know, God, God doesn't know anything about this. I've got it way down in here. Got it down in your core being. And so this young man, that's where he was at. He was there, in this case, he was there with his possession. Matthew 19, 21. What did I read? Did I read that, Matthew? But let me read it to you again. Jesus said to this uh, rich young ruler, if you will be perfect. Well, you know, I've, I've, heard, I've heard preaching on this. I don't know if you, I don't know how much preaching y'all have heard over this. I've heard a lot of preaching in my day. <laughs> wow. Uh, that, that they preached that you've got to be perfect. No, Jesus is not saying we've got to be perfect but we must be complete where his commandments are concerned. The young man asked him, said, uh, what must I do to enter into life? And what was Jesus' response? Going once. <laughs> he said, the, the way into life, three little words, keep my commandments indicating that in his commandments, we will find everything that we need in life or could ever desire in life or ever want in life. We'll find it on the inside. How? By the keeping of his commandments. And so people have taken that. And again, I, I'm just simply relating back to what I know from the, my way past that people say, well, it's, they would say, it's just too hard to keep the commandments of God. They're too hard. And so what, what were they looking for? They were looking for some reason or some excuse as to why they could not do what Jesus wanted them to do. So here in the, in the 21st verse of the 19th chapter, Jesus said unto him, if you will be perfect, perfect or complete in my commandment. He's talking about the commandments. That's the whole subject of this, of this story. 
Jesus said unto him, if you will be perfect or complete, go and sell what you have, give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. At this, at this, the young man became distressed. He became sad. What did he do? When he walked away from Jesus, what does the Bible say? He went away sorrowful. He was attached in his core being on the inside to his possessions. And so it's interesting in, in it sometimes how, the, how the, that so subtly can work on a person and, uh, and, and, and change their whole uh, mentality or their whole thinking about things, about possessions. Because there is a spirit that gets involved in that, that the more I get, the more I want, the more I want, the more I go after. There's a spirit that gets involved in that. So what we do, we forget the commandments and now all of it is in us of what we want or what we're after or what we're seeking. And so that's the way this young man went away. He went away sorrowful simply because he was attached. He worshiped what was uh, in him, his possessions. He worshiped his possessions. So he had done some good things. He had done some things that was right. He had done some things that was good before God and he boasted about it in his reply to God. We talked about, about that. Uh, Mark chapter 10, turn there, Mark, Mark uh, chapter 10 and verse 21. And here's Jesus, his response to him. Mark 10, verse 21. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Now, notice how Jesus responded to this young man's attitude, his thinking, his motives, and so forth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto, said unto him, one thing that you lack, go your way, and I, I talked about this, go your way, sell whatsoever you have, give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. And come then, and notice what he said, come and take up your cross and follow me. Now, in this case, what was his cross? What was this young man's cross? This, this young man's cross was come and follow me. That was his cross. Jesus loved him. We read the scriptures there. And uh, uh, that's simply what Jesus was saying to him. Your cross is not like my cross at Calvary. Your cross is, has nothing to do with redeeming people. But your cross is to what? Follow. Is to follow me. Why? Because in following him possessions, possessions, uh, you don't have to think about those things if you keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. What shall I do to enter into life? Keep my commandments. You don't have to be concerned about possessions when you, when you take up your cross and you follow him. Amen. All right, so in, the, in uh, Luke's gospel, the 12th chapter, Matthew, Mark, Luke, you know, uh, Luke chapter 12, here's, here's, here is a, um, I guess you could say this is a, uh, I don't know if you could say it, it's a warning. Uh, I don't, maybe that's a little strong word, but yet in some, it's certainly an instruction, let me put it that way. Luke chapter 12, verse uh, 15. And he said unto them, talking to these that were following him. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. His life is not found in his possessions. His life is found in him. Jesus said to the young man, take up uh, our, uh, you know, Follow me how, what was the question that the young man asked? What must I do to enter into life? And what did Jesus say? Keep the commandments. So we find then in the commandments and keeping of the commandments, there's more than, there than you'll ever need. There's more than you'll ever need to have because God will do what? He will do exceedingly, abundantly, 
above anything that we can ask. How many of you can grab a hold of that and believe that tonight? He will do exceedingly abundantly above. But what's the key to it? Where's your heart? What are you serving? Who are you serving? So the key to it is follow my commandments. That was what Jesus said to him. All right, so the thought here is this, that God is not opposed to anybody having possessions. In fact, he is, he is El Shaddai. He is Jehovah Jireh. What does that mean? What's those names mean then? He is the God who's what? More than enough. He's the God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He's the God that, that owns all of the gold and the silver and the cattle on a thousand hills. Why does he own all of that? If he owns all of that, is that just so he can surround himself with? No, no. He has all of that in his possessions that he wants to bless his children with. He wants to bless his people with that. He's got more than enough. Amen. He's got more than we could ever want. He's got more than we would ever need. He's got more than we would ever, could ever wish for. He's got it. How do I get it? I do it like he told the rich young ruler. What? Jesus simply said what? Keep my commandments. Thank you once again for being a part of our broadcast today. I'm always grateful to know that you're there and that you're watching and that the Lord is blessing you as you receive the word of the Lord. I want to pray with you uh, before we leave today. Father, I pray for the people. I pray, Lord, that your hand of blessing, your hand of deliverance, your hand that brings good things into their lives will be upon them and that they will receive that which you have provided for them in Christ Jesus and their life will be made better because of those things that you have done and that which they have received by faith from you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thanks again. We always appreciate you being there, as I've already said, and we'll see you next time right here on Victorious Living. You've been watching Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. It's our hope that today's message has ministered to the need you have in your life. If you would like to receive today's message in its entirety, please call 1-800-842-7896. Or if you're in the Nashville area, call 615-226-2145 and ask for the product number on the screen. Visit us online at victoriousliving.org. If you're ever in the Nashville area, come and worship with us. Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. From Pastor Cowan and the Congregation of Faith is the Victory Church, we'll be looking for you next time right here on Victorious Living.